Good morning. Uh, we'd like to welcome you to the graduation ceremony for the Charlottesville Fire Department's recruit class number six. Before we begin, let's observe a moment of silence for the victim of Wednesday's morning's tragic fire. Thank you. Please continue to keep the family of those lost and our CFD family in your thoughts and prayers as our community navigates through this difficult time. On behalf of the Charlottesville Fire Department, Fire Chief Dr. Hezadine Smith, we would like to acknowledge the following. Charlottesville City Council, City Manager Chip Boyles, Deputy City Managers Ashley Marshall and Sam Saunders, our CFD family, our retired CFD family, our extended family and friends, we welcome you and thank you for your attendance, both in person and virtually. Captain Kersley, if you could call the class. This time, if everyone would please stand for the presentation of the colors presented by the Charlottesville Fire Department Honor Guard and remain standing while Chaplain Paul Holyfield provides a blessing over us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, indivisible. Uh, Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day of life and breath. We recognize you, the creator of all things. We ask you today to bless our time here today. Lord, we thank you for those that have worked hard, that have spent time away from family and friends to, to make themselves 
worthy of the calling they have seen fit in their lives. We ask you to bless them, protect them, protect all, all that work with them, that they may continue to follow your example and lay down their lives for their friends. We give you glory and honor today. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. This time I'd like to have City Manager Chip Bowles come forward to address the group. Good morning, everyone. It is a grand morning. It's so nice to see such an outstanding group of, of public servants, their family, friends here with us this morning. Um, so wonderful to see what I would guess to be one of the most diverse uh, graduating firefighting classes, certainly in Charlottesville's history, but I would extend that much further than our boundaries. Uh, I do thank you for allowing me to say welcome this morning. Welcome to the city of Charlottesville. Welcome to Charlottesville High School. Kind of old, but what a wonderful facility. Welcome to the family of the city of Charlottesville, and welcome to the Charlottesville Fire Department. This recruit class is joining the city at a very unique time. Certain circumstances have allowed the city to be in the midst of a paradigm shift in leadership with a completely new city manager's office, many new department heads, and many new team members such as this new recruit class. In addition to the new city members, the past 18 months of the pandemic have taught us a new way of working with each other. All of this contributes toward a new way to provide our services to our citizens in ways that seemed unimaginable just months ago. This recruit class joins the rest of us in being the inaugural class to perfect this new way of work. I'm so happy to be one of the ones to welcome this class into the city and I look forward to welcoming many new firefighters into the future. You are joining a very long and prestigious history of firefighters and public servants serving our community. You provide a service that too often goes unnoticed and underappreciated, but always know that your city council, your leaders, your fellow firefighters, your city team, and all of the community do understand and do appreciate the commitment and dedication that you provide every minute of every day, making this job a life service. Now and every day thereafter, thank you. We do appreciate it. And I look forward to working with each and every one of you for many, many years to come. Congratulations on your graduation. Chaplain Holyfield, if you could return back for uh, the administ administration of your oath of office. Chaplain Holyfield just recently joined us, and uh, we have a tradition in the department for um, providing an oath of office and a duty to service. So uh, City Manager Bull is going to administer that oath for Chaplain Holyfield. Chaplain? If you will repeat after me, I, Paul Hollyfield, I, Paul Hollyfield, solemnly promise that I will faithfully, solemnly promise that I will faithfully, and diligently perform the duties of chaplain, and diligently perform the duties of chaplain for the city of Charlottesville Fire Department, for the city of Charlottesville Fire Department, and will provide comfort and spiritual support, and will provide comfort and spiritual support to the members of this department and the citizens to the members of this department and the citizens of the community when called upon of the community when called upon i will strive to set an exemplary standard i will strive to set an exemplary exemplary standard <laughs> of ethical and moral conduct of ethical and moral conduct furthermore as chaplain furthermore as chaplain 
I will provide comfort and spiritual support to all persons. I will provide comfort and spiritual support to all persons. Without bias towards religion. Without bias towards religion. Affiliation. Affiliation. Gender, orientation, and race. Gender, orientation, or race. National origin. National origin. Age or any other such distinction. Age or any other such distinction. I accept the responsibility willingly. I accept the responsibility willingly. And without reservation. And without reservation. Thank you. Uh, at this time, I'd like to call Deputy Chief Emily Pleacher forward for a special presentation. Good morning. I have the distinct uh, pleasure and honor of getting to introduce our special guest this morning who has a special presentation. Um, our special guest is Justin Vesser, who's the managing uh, or the manager of the ambulatory pharmacies um, for the University of Virginia healthcare system. Um, and why he's so special to us is, as the city manager noted, uh, this has been an era of change and an era of new business and a new way of doing things. And one of those new things that we did this year, uh, or in the last 18 months, was work hand in hand, very closely with our partners and friends at the health department and the healthcare systems to mitigate this, this thing we called COVID. And, uh, Justin has been one of the key people involved in the uh, programs that we've rolled out, um, particularly with a homebound program uh, where we went into people's homes vaccinating. And I'll let him talk more about that, um, but uh, I'd like to invite him up at this time. Good morning. I, uh, I have to admit I was very excited about this, uh, about the, the ask to come and be here today. I've never been to anything like this before and, uh, and to be able to see all you young men and women in your uniforms uh, coming in, it's, it's uh, in a time when we need more heroes, uh, it's great to see a bunch of heroes marching here. So thank you for what you're doing and for what you're about to do in your career. Um, you know, it's, it's really something that we are able through all this, uh, you know, strange times to be together in a group, you know, to sit next to each other and, um, you know, to, to gather in something that's not a Zoom meeting or a WebEx, which is what most of my life looks like these days. But, um, um, but I'm here because of an experience that I got to have this past year. So, you know, COVID has been one of those things that hopefully is a once in a lifetime thing for all of us, uh, but it's had the, the um, the profound ability to take things away. Um, you know, it took away our ability to gather, it took away our ability to be at peace, it took away, uh, it, it gave us an awful lot of fear and uncertainty, and uh, it didn't go away. You know, we hoped it was one of those things that you saw in the news and it would go away, but it didn't go away, and it, and it kept doubling down and it kept creating more havoc and causing more pain and more loss of life and more loved ones lost. And, you know, uh, there was a period of time about a year ago where, um, you know, it was, it was getting real for everyone. You know, we were starting to lose a lot of things and, and people asked me all the time, um, what, what's, how does this end? How, what is the eventuality? And there really was only one way out and that was a safe, effective vaccine that could be given to everyone. And unfortunately, I'm a pharmacist. I'm, it's not unfortunate that I'm a pharmacist. Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, because I am a pharmacist and I understand how the process of developing a new vaccine works, I was afraid because the timeline for what we could reasonably expect was not quick. And I would have never thought uh, that this time later that we would be standing on what is past the halfway point anyway and well towards recovery where people um, in, in our country and hopefully soon uh, all the way around the world will be able to have that vaccine in their arm so that we can get to a way of life uh, that's not marked by fear. And that mission was a tall order and the entire, not just the entire country, the entire world was trying to rapidly get good at mass vaccination very quickly. And we had that struggle here in town, here in Charlottesville, until in the Blue, here in the Blue Ridge Health District and throughout Virginia. And 
getting many, many people vaccinated was a challenge. Um, and we worked together with um, the different city and county organizations and agencies with different health systems in town. And, and through all of that, we were able to get mass vaccination up and running. And people who could get to us, to our various clinics, uh, and to here at Charlottesville High School, there were times when there were clinics being run here, then they were able to get that vaccine and, and get towards uh, some of that peace and safety. But there came a time pretty early in the process where we realized that there were people who were being left behind. And some people were left behind because um, of the conditions in their life that, uh, that, that made it where they didn't even know, they didn't even know that there was an option for them. Um, so we had to do a lot of outreach into communities, um, you know, communities that were impoverished, communities that uh, didn't speak English as their first language or didn't speak English at all. Uh, had to do a lot of work there. But it really opened our eyes to the fact that we needed to look everywhere. We needed to find out who is being left behind. And all of a sudden, uh, through different sources, it became very clear that there are people who aren't just left behind in their COVID vaccine. They aren't just left behind in getting tested if they're symptomatic for COVID. They're left behind in almost every area of their life. And those are people who, for whatever reason, they can't leave their home. Um, I, you know, uh, had, was aware that that was something that was a challenge for people. I was aware of programs like Meals on Wheels um, and for shut-in programs and things like that. But it became real to me when uh, I went on my first trip to go vaccinate a person in their home and I was thrilled to death that, that through this process, we've gotten to meet a lot of great partners in the community. And Chief Felicia was one of the ones who said, um, hey, let's partner on this. Let's get out and, uh, and find where homebound people are and let's give them their vaccine in their home. So we went along with them, but we needed somebody to go with us. Uh, there's a lot of doors in our community that would not have opened for me. Um, even if I stood there with my UVA badge, even if I stood there with my white coat, um, there's a lot of doors that wouldn't open for me. And we needed a partner. We need a partner who people trust and who people uh, always open their door for. And who could be better than that than a firefighter? Um, and so uh, Chief Felicia lined us up with um, my friend, Mark Ladd. And Mark Ladd uh, was there on the first day. Uh, Chief Felicia and he and I went out and we knocked on people's doors and said, surprise, we're here for a vaccine. It wasn't a surprise. We called them first and let them know we were coming. But, but we went to their house uh, we saw where they live. They invited us into their home and we gave them their vaccines there in their home. And um, I can tell you that uh, at UVA Health, we have vaccinated, we have given over 123,000 vaccines. Um, I've given hundreds and hundreds myself in various settings. And there are no more profound experiences that I've had doing uh, these shots or in anything I've done in my career than in these trips that, that I took with Mark. And, um, I couldn't do, uh, I did it uh, the first couple weeks to get it up and running and then we had a variety of nurses and physicians and pharmacists and everybody else um, who's taken up the, uh, the toll since then. But the one thing that was in common with all of them was Mark took them all. He went on every single trip and he went into those people's homes, he knocked on their doors. Um, they see that soft uniform, they see that red color um, and they trust you. And um, when we were there, they were excited to get their vaccine, though they were nervous and scared. And I can tell you there were people who were hesitant, who did not want the vaccine. They were scared. They didn't know if they should get it or not. But having a firefighter there with that soft uniform to reassure them and also tell them, while I'm here, I'm going to check your home and make sure it's safe. I'm going to change your, fire, your smoke, uh, smoke alarms if I need to. They love that more than they love the vaccine. Um, but I can tell you that, that there were doors that were open that wouldn't have been opened if Mark hadn't been there. Um, he made all of our people feel at home. These are physicians and pharmacists and people like me who work behind the desk. And we don't know what it's like to go into uh, a home that has a dirt floor or to a patient who has been in a bed unable to move for 10 years, who can't even communicate and can't even talk. Um, to go into a person's home who is in their, who is over 100 years old uh, and has virtually no family and virtually no caregivers, nobody looking out for them. Um, it was, it was a profound experience for all of us. And, you know, it only worked because of this partnership. We could have done some, some shots um, another way, but we could not have done the, I don't even know how many, it's 400, 500 different visits that we made over the past several months. And, uh, and Mark Ladd, um, I could see Mark come alive uh, in that experience over time. 
uh, he and I went into the home of a man who um, had uh, been a UVA employee for 45 years, uh, now is bound in his home, you know, can barely get around. And we got to sit and talk to him for a good half an hour about what, uh, you know, what his experience had been, what his life had been like, and who knows what the last time that someone had uh, had, had that, that kind of, uh, uh, you know, time to hear this guy's story. And we heard that over and over and over again. It quickly became the thing that everybody on my team and throughout UVA wanted to do was they were fighting for the opportunity to go with Mark and, and ride around. Um, it was a good experience. It always feels good to feel good, especially in times where there's not much to feel good about. Um, but it's more than that. It was, um, you know, I can't imagine in my job where I sit behind a desk to do what you all are going to do in your career. You're going to go, you're going to run towards what everybody else runs away. And that's something I can't reconcile in, in my mind. Um, but when you think about why you're doing this, and when you think about why little kids, like my little boys think that you're a hero, um, there's sometimes that it means you sit down with someone who's not like you and you look at them in the eye and you hear their story and you bring them uh, some hope. And Mark Ladd, my friend, did that an awful lot. And it was my privilege to work with him and I'm glad to be here today to be able to, to honor and recognize him. So, Mark Ladd. At this time, I'd like to take a moment to uh, recognize and introduce to you all the department's executive staff. Uh, we'll start with, where'd she go? <laughs> we'll start with Deputy Chief Emily Policia, Deputy Chief Mike Rogers, Deputy Chief Joe Powers, Fire Chief Dr. Hesdine Smith, Chief Smith, the group is yours. Good morning. Oh, I think you can do better than that. Good morning. Good morning. So happy to see each and every one of you. Before I get started, I'd first like to acknowledge the presence of previous fire chiefs who have served the city of Charlotte and the fire department. Would you please stand? I'd like to say thanks to our city manager, council members, my executive team, and all of you for being here in support of our new firefighters. Chief Carpenter, Captain Rod Zinka, Captain Struthers, Linda and Darlene, and others, I really appreciate your collective support in terms of getting these recruits to this point. The success of the recruitment, selection, and orientation processes couldn't have been possible without the collective support of many of you here today. It indeed was a family effort. From the agility to the written testing process, the interview panel, and the crews that helped with the hands-on training, whether it was fire training or the EMS training. On December 2nd, 2020, one day after me joining this department, the firefighter job post closed, and we had 309 applicants. After the initial screening of the applicants, we ended up with about 287 remaining. Additional processes were coordinated that included a pass-fail written, written test, conducted by an external company, a internal fire department physical agility test at our Fontaine training station, and a committee review of the applicant's personal history via questionnaire. At the end of all those processes, we had 116 eligible candidates. Based on the recommendations of the hiring committee after initial screening, 62 moved on to the next phase for interviews with a diverse panel of our employees. After additional recommendations, I then interviewed about 40 candidates over a two-day period, and ultimately 
22 of you are here today. You're worthy to be here, and you've earned the right to be a Charlottesville firefighter. Graduates, you were chosen out of many who applied. You were selected not only because you were qualified, but also because some of you were born here and others grew up in this community. Some of you worked at our local hospital, served this country in the military, volunteered at other fire departments, and served in law enforcement, among other things. Be proud as you embark upon a career that will allow you to serve this community for as many as 20 to 30 years. This couldn't come at a better time in the city of Charlottesville, so thank you for joining the family. This group is a true reflection of the Charlottesville community. They have trained hard, hugged each other, learned the value of similarities and differences between each one of each other, and you've cried. You've probably seen me cry too. <laughs> That's the truth. Be proud, stand tall. As we say in Jamaica, out of many one people. Our values are based on the four principles we're committed to every day. Family, integrity, respect, and excellence. You're expected to emulate those values in everything, every interaction, and with everyone every day. Your commitment to serve this community and our team, you're expected to exemplify these values as a family every single day. Train hard so you're ready when the alarm goes off. Moms, dads, spouses, siblings, relatives, I'm very appreciative that you have agreed to share your loved one with us. I promise you that I will ensure that they're safe physically and mentally as they serve our community for years to come. We want each one of them to come home to you safely after every shift. Please keep us in your prayers. Thank you. We'll now do the oath. Before we do the oath for the, the group, I'd first like to do the oath of office in terms of uh, Captain Rod Zinka was recently promoted, and we didn't have the opportunity to acknowledge him through his uh, oath and the process. I state your name. I, Jess Rodzinka. As an officer for the City of Charlottesville Fire Department. As an officer for the City of Charlottesville Fire Department. Recognize my obligation to protect and serve Recognize my obligation to protect and serve. And preserve the life and property of the public we serve. And to preserve the life and property of the public we serve. And I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully and impartially. I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All duties incumbent upon me. All duties incumbent upon me. As an officer for the City of Charlottesville Fire Department. As an officer for the City of Charlottesville Fire Department. According to the best of my ability and understanding. To the best of my ability and understanding. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. For those of y'all that don't know me, I'm uh, Battalion Chief Scott Carpenter, and I'm responsible for the Division of Professional Standards here at the, at the department. And uh, before I get into uh, addressing the recruits, I want to take an opportunity to thank uh, the following individuals uh, for their vision and support of Recruit Academy Number 6. The city staff, uh, for all of your hard work leading up to and during this academy, Fire Chief Dr. Hesedine Smith, uh, the executive staff of the department, Deputy Chief Bleacher, Deputy Chief Rogers, and Deputy Chief Powers. Uh, the department's administrative staff, Lisa Stamets and Paula Woods. Battalion Chief Joe Phillips and Battalion Chief Alan Couser for their instruction and support. The staff of professional standards, the EMS coordinator, Ms. Linda Johnson, Captain Jess Rodzinka, 
retired Captain James Struthers, Firefighter Steve Hagendorn, and all the other instructional staff. Without each of you, we could not have been successful. Lastly, I'd like to thank the families of Recruit Class 6 who supported your loved ones during the academy. As you can tell, it honestly took a village. To the recruits, I thank you for an all-out effort every day. Class 6, you've listened to us talk about the largest hiring class in the history of the department. The most diverse group of employees hired. The impact that you'd have on the culture of this department. Have you realized what that impact is? Has it genuinely sunk in yet? Let me break, break uh, uh, down a, a, probably a less obvious fact. The youngest of you at your earliest eligibility will be able to retire in May of 2051. This means the diversity of this class, your growth within the department, your future leadership, and your overall impact will affect the department for the next 30 years. Therefore, this group's legacy will be felt in the department and the community long after many of this room have completed our careers. But don't blink. 30 short years will go by fast, so take the time to reflect on your days, weeks, and years here. Journal about it. Record things about the events and the people you work with. Take lots of pictures, and it will make lots of memories. You've completed the academy, but the learning doesn't stop here. For the rest of your career, continue to be a steward of this profession and perfect your craft. Take the opportunity to learn. Put yourself in positions outside of your comfort zone, both physically and emotionally, as it'll be there which you will grow and become the department's future. And it wouldn't be training if I didn't give you a few nuggets to move forward with. Here they go. The citizens of Charlottesville, they own the equipment that you use daily. So keep it clean and ready. You owe it to them to take care of their property. Don't run, but move with a purpose. Seconds matter, both in the firehouse and on the scene. Keep your SCBA full. Full means all the way full, not almost full. That little amount of air could save your own life. Correctly packed hose lines deploy the best. Take the time to pack them back right. Chase kinks. Don't ever step over one and keep going. Everyone on that fire ground needs every gallon of water those hoses were designed to deliver. EMS equipment is unmistakably the most utilized equipment on the apparatus. Therefore, make sure the inventory is adequately stocked every day. Make sure the hand tools are clean and properly maintained. Start the saws every morning to make sure the blades are sharp and ready for service. Take care of and keep up with your personal protective equipment. Do all of your equipment checks first thing in the morning and don't skip a thing. Rest. Many of us have busy lives, but you must rest. Diet. We all love a great meal, but eat as healthy as you can. Exercise. You need to be prepared for the job too, just like the equipment that you're keeping ready. Mental health. You will see and do things that can be unmentionable. Seek help as needed and look after each other. And a few other words of guidance. This profession can be rewarding, challenging, and much like, like life, frustrating at all hours of the day. So try to and always follow this advice. Treat everyone living, dying, and dead like family. Treat everyone living, dying, and dead like family. The best plans are just those plans. Of course, we all plan to retire. But unfortunately, you're not guaranteed to retire on your terms. So be smart, be humble, and live life every day. The Crew Class 6, we're proud of you, and we're excited for our future. Thank you.
this time, Captain Rod Zinka, if you could come forward to address the class. How's everyone doing? Hello and welcome uh, to our distinguished guests, family, friends of the crew class. Guys, we did it. Uh, 22 weeks, over 880 hours that we logged. We know we worked harder and a lot more time than that. And I'm proud of you for that. We spilled copious amounts of sweat, some blood, allegedly, and a lot of tears. But we made it through it. However you all started, came in as individuals, you now are one big family. And welcome to that family. I've been struggling with what to say, and Chief Carpenter didn't help with it much, so we're going to wing this one, so hang on. Um, I'm just going to give you advice, the advice that was given to me as a probationary member uh, coming into the fire service long ago. Be a sponge. Take advantage of all the information you can. Ask questions. Ask questions for everyone and from everyone, from the senior staff to your peer right alongside your arm. They will learn, they will teach you something and you will learn something from them every day. Always be busy. There's always something to do around the firehouse. Something to clean, something to train on. If you find yourself with downtime, find a tool, learn how it works. Get better at your job. This job has a long and distinguished history. Learn about it, understand it, and strive to be a master of your craft. Show up ready to work. Two hands, two tools. Expect fires and expect victims every time you go out the door. Don't be surprised when you make the corner and you see a fire when you're dispatched to a fire. Don't listen to the naysayers. There will be peers throughout the fire service anywhere in this country that have negative things to say about the fire service. Don't listen. Keep pushing forward and be a part of the solution and a change for better fire service that we have. Thank you, especially to the recruit class, for allowing me to be your instructor for the last 22 weeks. It has been an honor. Thank you guys for the 110% you've given me every day. Good luck, and don't blink your eyes. It goes by quick. We're going to keep it short and sweet. At this time, I'd like to have Captain Kersley call the class to attention and proceed them to the stage for their oath and penny. We will now do the firefighter oath of office. Please raise your right hand. I state your name as a firefighter for the city of Charlottesville Fire Department. Recognize my obligation to protect and preserve the life and property of the public we serve. And I do solemnly swear that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all duties incumbent upon me as a firefighter for the City of Charlottesville Fire Department, according to the best of my ability and understanding. Thank you. 
Shauna Ames, engine 10, C shift. Malik Barty.
Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a hand for recruit class six. This time I'd like to have Fire Chief Tiffany Green from the Prince George's County, Maryland Fire Department come to address the class. Let's see. You guys have me going after your chief, who's so eloquent, my goodness, and all the other battalion chiefs. I think they pretty much said it all, but I'll give it a try. And I'm vertically challenged, so I can't see all of you, so I'll do my best. Good morning, good morning. It is my distinct honor and privilege to be here today in Charlottesville on such an exciting day. To the graduating recruits, on behalf of the men and women of Prince George's County Fire and EMS Department, I would like to extend our congratulations on a job well done. To the family members that are here today, thank you for sharing this journey with your loved ones for putting up with months of dirty laundry, sore muscles, and stress-filled nights, we thank you. They would not be graduating here today if it wasn't for you. As they move forward in their careers, they still need your support, love, and patience. I know Chief Smith and his outstanding command staff will do everything they can to send your loved ones home each and every day, and I am confident that many of tomorrow's leaders sit amongst us today Welcome to our public safety family. Thank you. As I begin to work on my speech and kind of ponder what I was going to say today, I couldn't help, remember my own, couldn't help but remember my own graduation 22 years ago. When I think back to that day, I remember a lot of things. I remember fe feeling anxious as I was about to start my career in the fire service. I remember feeling a sense of relief with finally not having to go to the training academy each and every day for 6 a.m. lineups and 2 p.m. grueling PT sessions. I also remember a feeling of belonging, belonging to something greater than myself. I was a part of a team, a crew, and a family. What I didn't remember, however, was who the keynote speaker was or what they said. So having said that, I will keep this brief and leave you with a few key points that I hope you, rem you will remember throughout your career. First things first, remember why you are here. The only reason we exist as firefighters and paramedics is to serve. The safety of the residents and visitors of your great town is your purpose. When they call the Charlottesville Fire Department, they are depending on you to be the best. For the last few months, you have been drilled and prepared to be the best. It is now time for you to execute. When you answer calls for service, treat each patient like it's your grandmother. Show them what you and CFD is about. There is no 912. You are all they have and answer each call with excellence and professionalism. Secondly, you are now a part of a family. When you put on that uniform and wear the Charlottesville Fire Department patch, take pride in it. Represent the best of the fire service on and off the job. When I began to research this recruit class and ask around about you, what I found was astonishing. 
This is the most diverse recruit class in the history of Charlottesville Fire Department. What a tremendous accomplishment. This class is not only filled with seven women, representing the highest number of women CFD has ever graduated, but is also filled with recruits from all over the world as far as California. The bonds and friendship that you have built over the last few months will last a lifetime. But what is most important is that collectively, this class has sent a message to this community and the fire service and has shown that diversity matters and it can be done. Remember though, while we celebrate your diversity, no matter who you are or where you are from in the fire service, you are only as strong as your brother and sister beside you. For the next 20 years or more, you will spend more than half of your time in the firehouse. You will laugh together, cry together, and eat together. You will also save lives together. You will see some things that you will never forget. Some of those things will break you, but some of those things will also give you a greater sense of purpose. Again, remember, you're only as strong as a brother and sister on the line beside you. Take care of each other. Watch each other's backs. When you see something that's not quite right, or you get that feeling in your gut, call your shift partner, your family member, your friend. Don't wait. And lastly, don't be afraid to fail. As you move forward into the next phase of your career, there will be challenges and obstacles. You will fail at some things, but you cannot quit. It is incumbent upon you to continue to train and educate yourselves to be ready for that next call. It has been an honor to be here today and share this day with you. We are extremely proud of your accomplishments. This class represents the future of Charlottesville Fire Department, and we are looking for great things from you. Congratulations on a job well done. Make your community proud. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Green. At this time, I'd like to call Matthew Joyce, the Recruit Class Sixes Class President, to the stage. First thing you learn in Fire Academy um, is to start being comfortable with being uncomfortable. Here I am. Um, when they asked me to talk a little bit, uh, of course I was going to take an opportunity to uh, talk about my friends here, uh, ooh, my family here. Um, so I'm here, but also you're here. Uh, and chances are, if you're sitting here, one of my classmates considers you family. So also, congratulations. You, uh, you made the cut. Um, but what family means to, to Ben or Selena or uh, Jordan, any of us, uh, could be a co totally different thing. Um, the definition itself is actually pretty fluid. Um, I've actually had the privilege of being a part of many different types of families from, of course, my family at home, some of which came from California to see me, so hey guys. Um, also, my Air Force family, um, Chief Smith, part of that as well. Uh, soccer families, I mean, any, anything, you can name it. Um, but most recently, you guys, uh, recruit class family. So we're a special one, right? Uh, we don't operate as usual sometimes. We can be efficient, we can be functional, but at other times we can be completely dysfunctional, and that's okay. You can ask Captain Struthers. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, but what it means to us as a, as, a, as a class could be just studying for all the tests, getting through those one by one, passing them all. What it could also mean uh, is checking on each other when we hear that there's been an emergency at home. Uh, we've had a couple during this class, and you know, I think we all reached out pretty quickly. So. Uh, that means a ton. It also means maybe just reaching out, touching someone's shoulder in the middle of the confidence course. 
letting them know you're there, getting them through. But really what it boils down to is I've got your back, and you've got mine, and we can keep that going all day, all night. Whatever problems you have, we all have, and we'll do whatever it takes to get that problem and make it go away. And that's family. So this family, I was saying we're a very special one. We're 22 unique individuals made up of men, women, season providers, those brand new to the field, and also some terrible mustaches. And uh, maybe some more ugly mustaches. Uh, but that makes us, that makes us special. So just instead of examining the outside, um, I wanted to actually give you guys a little bit of fun facts, change gears up a little bit, and kind of introduce you to a little bit of an interview. So we've got some superlatives we kind of, uh, they have never heard these, by the way, so we'll be okay. Things will be fine. It's all out of love. So let's just go through a couple. Feel free to shout out the answer if you know what it, uh, what it is. So first off, most likely to talk themselves into a deeper hole. <laughs> Most likely to know any words Latin translation. <laughs> also, the socks. The socks. So the next one is actually a, just a combination of a bunch of small class titles we can go with. They're all going to flash up at once, so um, just enjoy all the photos that come along with it. We've got our most forgetful is Tiana. Our most hangry is Jillian. Uh, most ticklish, found that out like last week, Jalen. Um, don't corner him in the back of the car, it's not a good thing. Biggest snack thief, Biscuit. Biscuit, yeah. Uh, biggest instigator, Hamp, don't mess up around him. I'll probably hear all about this speech later on. Uh, and class clown, of course, as you can see there, Ben laying on the desk. I think he's earned that right. So last couple. This is my favorite one. Most likely to freak out when two more people stare at them. <laughs> Do you want to stand up? <laughs> Elena? <laughs> Most likely to land on the cover of next week's Firefighter magazine. Oh, man. The embodiment of firefighting itself, Mr. Josh Warner. <laughs> So our last one is uh, most likely to prepare you for a successful career. And I'm not sure if you know this, that's not one of our recruits. That's actually our wonderful Captain Radzinka. Uh, I'll hear that about that later too. But in all seriousness, uh, Captain Radzinka has been a terrific instructor. Uh, as a class, we can't praise him enough. Um, I personally consider him one of the best instructors I've ever had through school, the Air Force, anywhere. Um, and I consider him a, a great friend as well. So if we could give him a hand for all this hard work. So today, this family right here in front is, uh, is changing. That's why we're here. So we're now actually combining with all of you. Um, and as a class, I mean, I'll speak on behalf of us, but we just want to thank everyone. So fire chief, staff, um, civilian personnel, all of our instructors, firefighters, families. We just want to say thank you for bringing us into your family. So. And I believe we're going to end with our class video here.
And with that, that concludes our ceremony. Thank you both for your attendance and your continued support. Recruit Class 6, you're dismissed. <laughs>